The topic of the sixth generation fighter has been in the air for a long time, and it seems as if we already know everything about it. But in fact, the program is constantly changing and improving during development. And sometimes data about the program changes so much that what we thought was factual is no longer true. So let's take a look at what exactly has changed in the NGAD program and how it will affect the future of warfare. March of 2025 was a particularly exciting month for anyone following the Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD program to develop the American sixth generation fighter. After all, it was this month that President Donald Trump, Secretary of Defense Pete Hegseth, and U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin jointly announced that Boeing had been awarded the Engineering and Manufacturing Development EMD, phase of the NGAD program. At the same time, the new fighter that will be the centerpiece of a family of systems, previously known as the Penetrating Counter-Air PCA platform, has finally received an official designation, F-47. The name not only pays homage to the legendary Republic P-47 Thunderbolt fighter bomber of World War II, but also references the year the United States Air Force was founded and symbolically aligns with the administration of the 47th President of the United States. In fact, Boeing's success marks the company's first win in a U.S. Air Force fighter contract since the Boeing P-26 Pea Shooter, America's first all-metal fighter, not counting the F-A-18 Super Hornet and F-15 Eagle fighters the company inherited through its 1997 takeover of McDonnell Douglas. The F-47 will replace the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, which entered service two decades ago as the U.S. Air Force's premier air superiority fighter. At the same time, new threats are emerging in the world, in particular from China and its stealth aircraft as well as hypersonic long-range missiles. Simply put, China can hit your fighters before they even take off, and its defensive missiles simply won't let you get close enough to accomplish your primary mission, clearing the skies of enemy aircraft. We're talking about air superiority after all. The NGAD fighter was originally intended to replace the F-22 without assistance acting as kind of a wonder waff. However, after reviewing the program, High Command concluded that critical functions that had to be on every fighter of the same type in the past could now be distributed across multiple platforms. For example, if your goal is simply to insert a human into a visual loop to control a swarm of collaborative combat aircraft, CCA drones, and direct the tactical ballet on the battlefield, your fighter does not necessarily need to have radar or any other type of sensors of its own. Instead, radars, infrared search and track systems, ERST, and electronic support measures, as well as electronic warfare capabilities, can be dispersed across modular CCA drones and other potential air platforms in the vicinity. One of such platform elements of the future NGAD family of systems, in addition to the CCA we've already mentioned, will be the newest Northrop B-21 Raider bomber. Although, according to various sources from U.S. Air Force officials, the new NGAD concept will even shift some functions to space platforms or constellations of hundreds of satellites and data linked to the aircraft in real time. CCA itself expects to initially purchase 100 to 150 units at a price of 20.5 to 27.5 million per tail, and a little later form a huge fleet of a thousand or more of these drones. It could be argued that the new approach with its emphasis on working in tandem with CCA takes the distributed sensor concept to the extreme and also severely limits the ways in which the F-47 can be used when CCA is not used. But in reality, there are far more pros than cons. After all, these drones will almost always be flying much closer to the target danger zones than a fighter anyway, and transmitting data to each other, allowing for cooperative sensing tactics and a higher degree of target triangulation. This will, in many cases, provide superior accuracy and more robust sensor data. The second item on the list of probable changes is the payload, or rather its reduction. The point is that NGAD has almost always been equated with a heavy interceptor with a relatively long range, optimized for combat in the Pacific, where Allied tankers would be pushed beyond the range of most fighters to their target areas, at least in the early stages of a conflict. The new fighter had to carry a substantial payload of various weapons in its internal base to maintain its stealth characteristics, which are critical to survival and the ability to deliver critical strikes to the enemy deep inside contested airspace. 
But what if we focus the lion's share of NGAD's arsenal on drones instead of figuring out how to stuff it inside a fighter jet? Thus, its dimensions can be greatly reduced and the survivability rate will increase tenfold, considering that the pilot will not even have to approach the enemy's defense systems at such a dangerous distance. This could be a literal game changer in the face of rapidly evolving enemy air defense capabilities and especially the fusion of information from multiple sensors to detect even the stealthiest aircraft at long range. Reducing the F-47's payload requirements and plugging even more CCA into it will provide excellent tactical flexibility. Consider this. Especially large munitions like long-range air-to-air missiles will be carried by B-21 Raiders located deeper in the contested areas, while the fresh F-15 EX Eagle II fighters and B-52 Stratofortress bombers will do the same along the outer edge of the high threat zones. Meanwhile, NGAD, located far ahead of them, can command the launch of missiles from these aircraft. But this does not mean that the fighter will be deprived of all its weapons. At least four AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile AMRAM or AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile JATAM, as well as several AIM-9X Sidewinders or four small diameter bombs will definitely find a secret place in its compartments. On the other hand, the recent statement by the U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin regarding the fact that the F-47 will have a combat radius of more than a thousand nautical miles adds a big question mark to the downsizing of the 6th generation fighter. Still, the nearly double 615 nautical miles of range available to the carrier-based F-35C would be a clear win for the NGAD fighter in terms of endurance, especially when flying missions in the Western Pacific far from aircraft carriers. Here, unlike in Europe and the Middle East, Allied and U.S. air bases are not located close to the battlefield, so the aircraft will have to cover huge distances. But it's here we must again make a reservation, recalling how the U.S. Air Force has repeatedly stated the importance of having a fleet of next-generation air-to-air tankers in operation by 2040, better known as the Next Generation Air Refueling System NGAS. And the most interesting thing is that Boeing itself has been working on the same low-visibility MQ-25 Stingray refueling drones for several years now. That is, the question of their compatibility with F-47 fighters can be considered practically resolved. So what exactly are we getting at? The decision on the 1,000 nautical mile operational range as well as the size of NGAD will obviously change if the U.S. Air Force manages to get a sufficient number of stealth tankers at its disposal by the time the sixth generation of fighters comes out. What the F-47, like its expensive predecessor, the F-22, will definitely not give up is a high degree of broadband low observability, allowing it to operate close to the core of highly advanced integrated air defense networks. This is confirmed by the dozens of concept art pieces of the NGAD tailless aircraft presented, including those from Boeing itself. Granted, no one has canceled the good old propaganda aimed at confusing enemies with an incorrect visualization of the future fighter. For example, canards located near the nose of the fighter are unlikely to reach a live craft, and by mid-April of this year, Air Force representatives themselves told Air and Space Forces magazine that the previously presented images should be taken with a large dose of skepticism. Another undeniable aspect of the F-47 was the presence of a pilot in the cockpit. While Elon Musk and other tech bros tirelessly tell everyone around them that small drones are about to replace conventional aircraft, aviation insiders and experts are convinced of the opposite. For example, Aviation Week Group Editor Bill Sweetman said, Whatever one's view of the F-22, it can't be replaced by a quadcopter. The decision on manned capability will definitely make NGAD a little less popular among enthusiasts than at the start of the program, when the discussion was, among other things, about an unmanned version of the sixth-generation fighter. But even something as trivial as a communications failure in the case of an AI pilot at the controls speaks of the unenviable fate of a fighter. Reflecting on this, Justin Bronk, a senior research fellow for air power and technology at the UK-based defense think tank Royal United Services Institute, stated, Human pilots can be trusted, but few want to see autonomous fighters making life-or-death decisions. He also added that fighters with the crew have obvious disadvantages, cost, training, and the need to rescue a downed crew. But in his opinion, relying on AI right now would be an unjustifiably bold step. 
References and discussions of the F-47's engine, Sweetman says, suggest an aircraft of impressive size with an equally impressive range, somewhat reminiscent of the aging F-111 Aardvark variable geometry bombers that were the Air Force's mainstay from the 1960s to the 1990s. The focus is on next-generation adaptive cycle turbofan engines, which are being fought over by two competing designs from Pratt & Whitney and General Electric. They have the revolutionary ability to change the amount of air bypassing the engine's compressor in flight, typically a high ratio of air bypassing a turbofan's compressor maximizes fuel efficiency, while a low ratio improves performance. Modern jet fighters invariably choose the latter over the benefits of the former, but with an adaptive cycle system, you can now have your cake and eat it too. An F-47 can cruise efficiently through the battle space in high bypass mode, loitering as needed, and then switch to low bypass mode to deliver peak performance, reaching speeds over Mach 2 when combat demands it. Plus, all that extra electrical power that the NGAD fighter's awesome engines can provide is something hardly anyone would complain about. The U.S. Air Force is hard at work developing combat lasers for its aircraft, so we may well see one of these in action as early as the 2030s. Now it's your turn to tell us what changes in the NGAD program we forgot to mention. Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.